Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of the derivative of a vector valued function. So by the definition, we have the derivative of this vector valued function which we'll call r. We'll denote it by r prime of t just like normal. And then it's the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h times r evaluated at t plus h minus are evaluated at t. And notice I'm being really careful here because this quantity in these parentheses is a vector and so we're scalar multiplying this vector by the scalar 1 over h as we take this limit. Another important notion is the unit tangent vector. So if r prime is not equal to 0 it's called a tangent vector of the curve defined by this function and uh, often we want to know the direction of that tangent vector more than we want to know its magnitude so we turn it into a unit vector by doing the following and this gives us something called the unit tangent vector so it's denoted by capital T and it's given by um, r prime over the magnitude of r prime and now notice that's going to set the magnitude of capital T equal equal to 1. Okay, so uh, we don't really want to do this limit every time we want to take a derivative of a vector valued function, so we have the following observation which allows us to do it um, more quickly, and that is if we have r is this vector valued function within um, entries, then the derivative of r is just what you get by taking the derivative of each entry. And so we'll do the quick proof of this, although there's not much to it because we're just going to use um, some stuff from calculus 1. So notice we have r prime of t is the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h, r of t plus h minus r of t, um, but that's just going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h, and now we can take the difference of these vectors. So notice this vector right here is going to look like x1 of t plus h all the way to xn of t plus h. And then this vector right here, well, is just uh, <clears throat> this guy that we started with. And recall that uh, vector subtraction is just given by element-wise subtraction. So in other words, here we have x1 t plus h minus x1 of t all the way up to xn of t plus h minus xn of t. Great. But now recall that the limit of a vector valued function is just given by the vector uh, whose entries are the limits of all of those functions. So in other words, what we can do is bring this limit into all of the entries of this vector and scalar multiply by this 1 over h at the same time. So that's going to give us the vector defined by the limit as h goes to 0 of x1 t plus h minus x1 of t over h all the way up to the limit as h goes to 0 of xn of t plus h minus xn of t all over h. So we get that vector. But now notice that this first entry is exactly the definition of the derivative of our function x1 from calculus 1. So we can just say that this is x1 prime of t, and then finally this last one is just the derivative of xn. So this is xn prime of t as needed. So in other words, if we want to find the derivative of a vector valued function, we just need to find the derivative of each of the component functions. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board and then we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, so now we want to look at two examples. So first of all, they're both going to be built off of this vector valued function whose first entry is t squared plus 3t plus 2, second entry is cosine plus sine, and third entry is t e to the t. We want to find this unit tangent vector first, and then we also want to find the equation of the tangent at this point 2, 1, 0. So let's go ahead and find the unit tangent vector. So the first thing that we need is the derivative, in other words the tangent vector, or this really should be called the function which will give us the tangent vector. So now we need to take the derivative of each entry, so that's going to give us 2t plus 3 here, and here we have minus sine of t plus cosine of t, and here we have to use the product rule to take this derivative, so we get t e to the t plus e to the t. 
Great. So we have that for r prime of t, and now capital T is going to be r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. And that's going to be pretty messy, but we'll sketch out what it is. So uh, here we have 2t plus 3 minus sine of t plus cos t, and then uh, t e to the t plus e to the t all over the magnitude of that vector. So recall the magnitude of the vector will be what we get by taking the square root of the dot product of it with itself. In other words, we're going to have the square root of 2t plus 3 squared plus minus sine t plus cos t, the whole thing squared, plus t e to the t plus e to the t, that whole thing squared as well. So I won't simplify that out. As you can see, it'll be a mess, but that's what we would get for this unit tangent vector. Okay, great. Now the next thing we want to do is find the equation of the tangent at 2, 1, 0. So the first thing we want is to know the value of the parameter. And notice if we set t equal to 0, we will achieve this point. So plugging in t equals 0 here, we get 0 plus 0 plus 2. Here we get 1 plus 0, and then we get 0. So it's exactly the point 2, 1, 0. Good. So that means um, we can also use that to find our tangent vector. So we'll plug that into r prime. Notice we don't need to plug it into t because we don't need a unit tangent vector. We just uh, need... Uh, any tangent vector. And so this is going to give us 3, because if we plug t equals 0 in there, we get 3, and then comma 1. That's what we get from plugging t equals 0 into the second entry. And then here we get another 1. So there's our tangent vector. And now we can use the formula for the equation of a tangent line. So I'll use S for the equation of a line. And this is going to be our starting vector, which is our point along the line, plus t times the vector pointing in the direction of the line. So we have that. That's the equation of the tangent line of this curve at the point 2, 1, 0. All right, this is a good place to stop.